Hello viewers, uh, welcome to my channel. And today's topic is uh, acromegaly. Uh, but before starting this topic, I would like to request you to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel. And if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, uh, you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. Uh, now I come to the topic, what is acromegaly? You know, it's a rare condition and uh, in this condition uh, the body produces too much growth hormones uh, which causes the body tissues and the bones to grow more quickly and uh, over the time uh, this leads to abnormally large hands and feet and uh, the wide range of uh, other symptoms as well uh, it's usually diagnosed in adults between the ages of 30 and 50 uh, but can affect the people of any age uh, when it develops uh, before uh, the puberty, it's known as uh, uh, gigantism. Uh, you know, acromegaly can cause a wide range of symptoms, uh, which tend to develop very slowly over the time. And uh, the early symptoms may include uh, uh, swollen hands and uh, swollen feet. Uh, uh, like a tiredness and difficulty in sleeping and uh, uh, sometimes maybe sleep apnea. Uh, gradual changes in your uh, facial features uh, which means uh, like uh, your bro uh, lower jaw and nose getting larger or your teeth becoming more widely spaced you know. Numbness and weakness in your hands which is caused by the compressed spinal nerves and uh, the children and the teenagers will uh, be abnormally tall and uh, uh, as the time passes you know or goes on uh, the common symptoms may include uh, uh, like abnormally large feet and abnormally large uh, hands you know uh, large and the prominent facial features like uh, nose lips and uh, uh, enlarged tongue as well a uh, skin changes like uh, thick, uh, oily skin, uh, skin tags, uh, like, uh, you know, it's depending on the voice, of the voice, like, uh, as a result of enlarged sinus and maybe vocal cords, you know, so maybe voice changes and uh, joint pains, uh, fatigue, uh, feeling unwell, a uh, blurred or maybe reduced vision, uh, loss of, uh, uh, like, uh, low libido or like loss of sex drive you know and uh, uh, abnormal periods if uh, uh, in case of females you know and uh, maybe the erectile dysfunction uh, in case of men and uh, and the symptoms uh, they become more uh, noticeable as you get older and uh, it can usually be successfully treated uh, but the early diagnosis and the treatment is very important to prevent the symptoms getting worse and uh, to reduce the chance of any complications, you know. Now, if uh, you don't get treatment, uh, you may be at risk of developing a type 2 diabetes, uh, maybe heart diseases, uh, high blood pressure, arthritis, uh, cardiomyopathy, which is the uh, disease of the heart muscles, you know. And... Uh, uh, ball polyps which can potentially uh, turn into the ball cancer if it's left untreated you know and uh, uh, because of the risk uh, of the uh, ball polyps the colonoscopy might be recommended uh, for uh, anyone diagnosed with uh, acromegaly you know and regular colonoscopy screenings are very important uh, to just uh, have it uh, have an eye you know uh, that it's not turning to the cancer uh, the next thing was to, uh, what are the causes? You know, it happens because your uh, uh, pituitary glands uh, produces too much growth hormones. And uh, these uh, pituitary glands, they are the pea-sized uh, gland, which is just uh, uh, below the brain. And its function is that it produces the growth hormones. And this is usually caused by the non-cancerous tumors 
uh, in the pituitary gland, which is called adenoma. Now, the most of the symptoms uh, are due to the excess of the growth hormone itself, you know, and uh, but some come from the tumor pressing on the nearby tissues, especially the neurological symptoms, you know, and uh, like uh, you may get headaches and the VN problems if the tumor pushes against the nearby uh, nerves, you know, and uh, uh, it does sometimes run in families, so but most of the time it doesn't uh, it's not inherited and uh, these adenomas they are usually uh, spontaneously develop uh, like uh, because of the genetic change in the cell of the their pituitary gland you know and uh, this change causes uncontrolled growth of the affected cells uh, creating the tumor and in rare cases uh, it's caused by the tumor in another part of the body such as lungs or maybe the uh, pancreas uh, or any other part uh, of the brain you know and it may be linked uh, to some genetic disorders uh, you know the type of the treatment uh, which is offered to uh, treat the acromegaly depends on uh, the symptoms uh, you are having you know and uh, generally the goal is to reduce the growth hormone production uh, to the normal levels or uh, relieve the pressure uh, a tumor may be putting on the surrounding nerves or surrounding tissues uh, treat any hormone deficiencies uh, improve the symptoms so this is the goal of the treatment and the most people uh, will have pituitary tumor that needs to be um, surgically removed you know and the medication and the radiation therapy uh, may sometimes needed uh, after or maybe instead of surgery you know but it depends and uh, it varies from person to person or case to case you know now the surgical treatment is uh, effective in most of the cases uh, and can completely cure this condition uh, but sometimes the tumor is too large to be removed entirely so you may need another operation or the further treatment with the medication and uh, uh, maybe radiation you know so uh, and uh, a surgeon during the surgery a surgeon will make the incision uh, a small cut under the general anesthesia inside your nose or maybe behind your upper lip uh, to access to the uh, pituitary gland you know so then a long and thin tube which is a flexible tube you know uh, with the light and the camera at the one end which is called endoscope which is inserted uh, into the opening uh, so your doctor can see the tumor and the surgical instruments are then passed through the uh, same opening and uh, they are used to remove that tumor you know and removing that tumor should instantly lower your levels of uh, growth hormone and relieve the pressure on the surrounding tissues and the nerves and uh, this it will improve the symptoms within few days and uh, but there are some risk factors involved with the uh, surgery you know like uh, it can cause a damage to the healthy parts of your pituitary gland or maybe a leakage of the fluid that surrounds up uh, and protects the brain, you know, and meningitis. Uh, it's rare, but it, there is a risk of uh, having meningitis, you know. And, uh, but your surgeon will discuss these risk factors of this surgery uh, in hand, you know, so uh, it will be helpful to make the right decision. Uh, in case of the medications, uh, you know when the growth hormone levels are still higher than the normal uh, even after the surgery you know so then your doctor will prescribe the medications uh, and the function is to uh, lower the uh, level of the hormones you know growth hormones and there are three different types of the, the three types of the medications that your uh, physician will uh, prescribe number one is an injection whether it's uh, uh, like uh, acterotoid or maybe uh, passerotoid, you know. 
So it's something that it slows, slows down the release of the growth hormones. And uh, the other option is uh, the daily uh, peg measurement injection, you know. So this blocks the effect, uh, effects of the growth hormone. And uh, the third one is uh, like uh, uh, bromocryptoin tablets. Uh, the function of these tablets is that uh, uh, it stops the growth hormone being produced, uh, but they only work in small portion of people. So mostly it's not effective. So these medications has a different advantages and uh, disadvantages. And uh, you should speak to your doctor uh, about uh, the pros and cons of each of these medications. Uh, in the cases where surgery is not possible, uh, as you know that all tumors cannot be removed, you know, and uh, where the medication is not working as well. Uh, other treatment option is uh, radiotherapy in that case, you know, and uh, this can reduce your growth hormone levels but it may not have like noticeable effect for several years and you may need to take medication in the meantime. So the two types of the radiation therapy which are used are uh, number one is stereotactic and the number one is conventional radiotherapy. Number two is conventional radiotherapy. Now in case of stereotactic radiotherapy, a high dose beam of the radiation uh, very precise, uh, like uh, aimed very precisely on that tumor, you know, adenoma. And uh, you will need to wear a rigid, uh, like a head frame or maybe plastic mask to hold your head still during the treatment. And this usually can be done uh, in one session. And the second type is the conventional radiotherapy. So it also uses a beam uh, radiation to target the adenoma, but uh, it is wider and less precise than compared to the stereotactic uh, radiation therapy, you know, radiotherapy. And this means that the treatment can damage your surrounding uh, uh, pituitary gland and uh, maybe brain tissue. So it's given in small doses uh, over four to six weeks to give your tissues time to heal between the treatments. So, so the stereotactic uh, is more commonly used to treat the adenoma because it uh, minimizes the risk of damage to the nearby tissues as it is very precise and focused, you know. And, uh, but there are, as you know, there, the radiation has uh, a number of uh, side effects as well. Uh, it often causes a gradual drop in the level of other hormones which are produced by the pituitary glands. Uh, so you will usually need hormone replacement therapy after this treatment. And uh, the follow-up is very important. Uh, and it is effective part of the uh, treatment, you know. So just to have an eye on the uh, excessive production of the growth hormones and improving your symptoms. So, uh, so follow up important. Uh, so yeah, that's it. And uh, the one more important question that I think I forgot is that uh, about the process of diagnosing the acromegaly you know well if your doctor suspects he may order the blood tests uh, and uh, the brain scans like CT scan or MRI so these are helpful to make the diagnosis and to know the location and the right size of the adenomas you know so it helps to uh, uh, choose the right treatment Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information about any disease or any medical condition, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share these videos to support this channel. Thank you very much. Goodbye.